Punk came to Indonesia in the 90s, when former dictator Soharto ruled the island nation with an iron fist. This was before they had the internet, and there was no free press. With its ideals of social justice, individuality and rebellion, punk became an outlet for Indonesia's suppressed youth to revolt against corrupt politicians and escape strict family and social conventions. I feel more free. I don't care about what people think about me. This is who I am. The government been raising the generation to be non-critical, to be very permissive. The grassroots punk movement swept across Indonesia, and today it has one of the biggest and most vibrant scenes in the world. But in the world's largest Islamic nation, political authorities and religious fundamentalists see punks as a threat because they speak out about corruption, the environment and religious oppression. Nowhere is the anti-punk sentiment stronger than in Aceh, Indonesia's only Sharia province. In December 2011, 65 punks were arrested there during a benefit gig for tsunami orphans. Their detention made international headlines as they were forced to undergo a moral rehabilitation that featured enforced prayer and military drills. The Sharia police shaved their heads and burnt their clothes, replacing them with uniforms. They have violated Islamic laws. Boys and girls mix freely. Girls engage in free sex. Things that make the situation uncomfortable and violate other people's rights. Despite the constant attempts to crush it, Aceh's punk scene is still alive. So we set out on a journey to find the last 19 punks of Aceh. To get to Aceh, we flew to Medan in North Sumatra and then drove for a day. We brought our friend Kartika from the Jakarta band Tika and the Dissidents to show us around. She hooked us up with our driver, Wilson. We were on our way to meet Yudi, one of the 65 detained Acha punks. Him and his band, Totaliter, were waiting for us at a bus terminal in a town called Kuala Simpang. How can you hang out at this uh, bus terminal? I felt sad seeing the conditions they lived in, but although some were orphans, many of them had chosen to live in a street punk community instead of with their families. The street punk lifestyle involves sleeping rough, busking for food money, making zines, campaigning against corruption, and organizing food kitchens. The punks were all Muslims, but since they don't agree with the fundamentalist turn that their religion has taken in Aceh, they have been branded a social disease. Like some of the kids here, even though they have homes, they sleep on the street, they eat from the street, and then they're just traveling around with no money, you know, like, and 
they forgot something, you know. They forgot that in Western country, the government there, they give you money when you have no job. Here, when you're jobless, the government just doesn't even know your name. Jiring is the biggest name in Indonesian punk. He's like the Indonesian Travis Barker. And his band, Superman is Dead, has been around since the 90s. Although he's not convinced by the street punk way of life, just like Yudi, he is frustrated with the many poser punks who adopt the image but ignore the ideology. There's a lot of punks, they just became punks because they're attracted to the violence. <laughs> you against? Nothing. I just want to look cool. If you sing about political stuff, go to the street and join the protest with us. You know, like show them that you really hate them. If you sing about it over and over again in front of your fans without doing nothing except singing, no change is gonna happen. <laughs> We continued our journey with Yudi to Banda Aceh, the regional capital where the punks were arrested. The area is under strict Sharia law, so alcohol is banned and it's forbidden for unmarried couples to walk alone together after dark. Muslim scholars are also trying to introduce a new Sharia law that officially bans the street punk lifestyle. How strict are they with covering up in Aceh? I don't know what will happen if we don't cover up, if we're gonna get like pulled by the Sharia police. The Sharia law to them is considered Aceh culture. So like you have to dress accordingly to the culture, which is with a hijab for women. Worried we'd get arrested by the Sharia police for not complying with the strict Islamic dress code. TK and I went shopping for hijabs. I don't know which one to get. Do you think I should take the tie-dye one? I think so, yeah, that's pretty cool. This one looks really punk, it has like holes in it and stuff. Yeah. How do you feel about going back to Banda Aceh? after having been in the detention center. How would you retaliate? Masyarakat Tapi kalau di di lengketi parang diapain sama senjata-senjata tajam udah sering. We started feeling uneasy as we approached Bandache. Yudi had only been back once since he was arrested and beaten, and he knew that he wasn't welcome. He got nervous when he realized that we had to drive past the detention center where he was held. Right after this turn over here, this is the detention center. So can the police see us? I think we're pretty good. Yeah, the wall is pretty high, so they can't. Yeah, this is where you were forced to pray, right? Yeah, kami di kawal dengan mobil patroli. Kami dari Little Rio, mobil patroli. Yudi's friends in Trotuar Chaos, Banda Aceh's last street punk band, were waiting for us by the Tsunami Museum. Yeah. Museum Street Punk Scan. Nama bandnya Trotoar Chaos. Yeah. So, what do you play? Do you play guitar or sing? Vocal, or? vocal. Sing? Are you having a show soon? Di Aceh ini lagi ada acara lagi kosong. Yeah, gara-gara pengangkapan kemarin, tapi di Aceh pun ada planning mau buat lagi acara. Nah, kami tetap ada, akan selalu ada, walaupun orang dimusnahkan kami, tapi kami memang nggak bisa dimusnahkan, akan terus ada. Sandy was the youngest new recruit in Aceh street punk community.
The only local journalist who was on the punk side was Shaidir Mahuyudin. Your photos spread all over the world. Um, what was the reaction here, being a Banda Aceh journalist? Did you get any trouble for it? Sedikit sulit, ya, menulis fakta yang terjadi di Aceh. Kita sering dicap pro luar negeri atau apa, termasuk saya sendiri. Ada yang beberapa mengatakan saya tidak pro syariah. Kalau pengalaman saya pribadi, saya lahir di sini, Aceh ini tidak seperti sekarang. Tidak. Sebelum tsunami itu malah ada pang itu ada sekitar tahun 80 di Aceh. Awal masuk pang itu di tahun 280. Saya pikir gejala seperti ini hmm, pasca tsunami. Makanya setelah tsunami itu pang lebih membangun lagi dan mereka lebih solid, lebih ramai di Aceh. Yeah. Chaplin and Yudi took us to the city's main tourist attraction, a giant cargo ship that the tsunami had washed up miles away from the coast. Kota ini, ibu kota dan Aceh dari Lokna, Lampu'u, Lele, sampai ke kota, itu semuanya rata di kota air. Tiba-tiba lagi lihat bangunan roboh, ada orang bilang, air laut naik, air laut naik. Pertama airnya nggak tinggi, cuma segini. Cuma disapu kaki orang pada terpanting semua, mentar-mentar. Orang kira-kira jarak japri setengah meter lagi hampir kena ombak tuh cepat-cepat panjat pagar masjid raya. Alhamdulillah selamat tempat orang-orang ambil wudhu di situ. Tapi yang anehnya masjid raya tuh rendah tapi airnya lebih tinggi tapi masjid raya sedikit pun nggak kena percikan airnya nggak kena di luar masjid raya macam di blender gitu di dalam masjid raya airnya tenang macam di kolam renang kita nggak tahu puasa Allah nah kita bilang juga lah keyakinan kita di sini nah, ada sempat juga ke rumah yang asli capri orang benda aja yang nggak tahu lagi denah lokasi rumah di mana udah plong gitu hampa yang dulunya capri takut lihat-lihat mayat gitu waktu hari itu sambil nangis nangis hilang rasa takut tapi untuk injak-injak memang mayat semua cari mama papa nggak jumpa sampai ke kamar mandi cari-cari semua nggak dapat jadi selamat tinggal berdua dengan abang adik mama kena ribuan ya seribu dua ratus ya dua ratus Chaplin is this why you you've taken care of uh, Sandy? Iya yeah, kangen sama adik dulu punya adik adik capi tapi sekarang nggak ada lagi wah Sandy lah jadi ya adik angkat itu kenalnya dari siap ngamen jumpa Sandy makan nasi sama-sama karena dia lapar kasihan capi lihat udah gemetar dia makan sama-sama satu bungkus berdua terus tanya capi tanya Sandy daripada kayak gini kayak gini mending kita ngepang Sen it was moving to see how they looked out for each other and young kids in the same situation as them. I suddenly understood why they hang out at the Tsunami Memorial Museum and call themselves the Museum Punks. Because the tsunami changed their lives forever. After the story Chapley told us about the Grand Mosque escaping the waves, it made sense that the tsunami was seen as a punishment from Allah and that to appease him, strict Sharia law was gradually being reinforced. The punks are all faithful Muslims, but since they don't agree with the region's ultra-fundamentalist turn, after the tsunami, things were only going to get worse for them. Yang pada main, anak-anak metal semua. Tiba-tiba, udah rame orang nonton semua, datang polisi, datang tentara, militer-militer pada datang. The venue where they were arrested was now the site of a fashion show. Be malam, Tiba-tiba datanglah Bu Iliza. Terus, tapi dibilang sama kantor polisi nggak bisa kalau acara pang. Sebetulnya acara yang kami buat tuh acara Baru sosial. Menggalakan dana buat anak yang dibiatu, panti asuhan. Jadi gara-gara masalah itu, kami dibilang pemalsuan surat. Udah lah, maka di, langsung ditangkapin. Terus dibawa ke KSPN setelah tiga hari di kantor polisi. Sepuluh hari kami di Minang sana, disuruh baris per baris, disuruh beribadah, disuruh post up, 
dipukulin. Ya. Bang memang diantikan, nggak boleh ada yang ngepang lagi. Diharamkan. Diantikan, haramkan udah kayak makanannya ya. Only a few blocks away was the Islamic Youth Movement, chaired by the deputy mayor, Miss Lisa herself. We popped in to hear what they had to say about their punk neighbors. Wali kota juga kader PI gitu. Tergabung dalam perhimpunan keluarga besar. We were at a tsunami museum earlier and we saw that there were a lot of punks hanging out. What do you think about that? Uh, punk ini adalah pelajar-pelajar yang kekecewa. Kita lebih kecewa nih. Punk ini sebenarnya sudah berapa kali ditanggulangi oleh pemerintahan. Dalam artinya mereka sudah direhab, sudah pernah ditangkap, dikasih pembinaan. Tapi akhir-akhirnya mereka balik lagi. Akibat yang pertama pemerhatian orang tua. Terhadap anak apa ini kita menganggap mereka ini juga sebagai uh, seseorang, seorang manusia. Kita juga menghargai mereka. Dalam artian uh, kita buktikan bahwa halnya ini kita tidak tidak menghina, kita tidak memberikan uh, bahwa, apa, kebebasan bagi mereka. It was pretty shocking to hear that in his eyes, forcing punks to undergo moral rehabilitation is a way of freeing them, rather than violating their human rights. Do you think that these Sharia laws are good for young people? Karena dalam Islam itu mengajarkan bahwasanya kita harus taat kepada pemimpin kita. Jadi apapun yang terjadi, kita Islam. Tapi kita diwajibkan untuk taat kepada pemimpin kita. Jadi budaya ini jangan dihilangkan. Ini yang perlu. Ini bukan Arab, ini bukan Arab, Bung. Bukan. Kau paksakan budaya, tapi kita bukan di Arab, bukan hidup di zaman Nabi. Cepat-cepatlah kau mati, tagi pahalamu di surga, surgamu neraka bagiku. Atas nama Tuhan ciptakan ketakutan. Surgamu neraka bagi kami, fasis kolo, penyembah agama, simpan semua ceramahmu. You were all in the detention center together, right? Ya, yeah, yeah, 65 orang. Tapi kok yang di sini ada SPN? Dia, 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 sama dia. Kepala kami dibotaki, pakaian kami, dressan kami semua dibakar. Dilakukan, diperlakukan secara manusia, secara manusia. Your friends who left the scene, did they do it because they were scared of the police or going back to the detention center? Ditangkapin lagi, takut terjadi seperti kejadian yang kemarin. Dan banyak juga dari kawan-kawan yang dari keluarga Edmund Lawa juga banyak yang udah tidak memilih jalan pang lagi. Katakan keluarganya yang menganggap pang itu tahu buruk untuk jalan hidupnya karena juga terdokterimisasi melalui media-media lokal. Tapi artinya mungkin tetap di pang cuma karena dia memikirkan keluarganya, jadi dia Perang kami untuk nggak ngepang lagi, tapi kami tetap ngepang. Karena pada dasarnya kami memang berjiwa pang, mau kayak mana cara dirubah kami, kami nggak akan berubah. That evening, something pretty unusual happened. The son of some Aceh authority had managed to organize the first punk show in Banda Aceh, probably since the punks were arrested. Halo, ya ini ini lagi lagi udah dekat nih. Is this a very rare thing that? You can go to a punk show in Bamba Aceh. Wah, wow, sangat langka. Di sini haus acara. Haus acara, Jarang acara haus. Jarang diadakan acara-acara gigs, gigs punk. So how come this is allowed? Kami pun kemarin acara karena outdoor. Orang ini indoor di dalam ruangan. Kami buat acara lebih belak belakan, frontal gitu. Orang ini tempat tertutup. Nah, belok kanan nih, belok kanan nih. Nah, kami turun dari sini. Because the organizer was well connected and the show was indoors with a foreign band, the police looked the other way. Go! That night, it was like they all forgot about the persecution and that they themselves couldn't get a show. The punks are tolerant and open, but the society they live in is not. Since Aceh, we've stayed in touch on Facebook and the punks are still being persecuted and beaten up. Last time we spoke to Yudi, who was back in jail.
My anchor, thank you very much. Hey, this is Banda Aceh, you know, this is Banda Aceh.